Okay, so in the last video, I was making using the pen tool to make these complex shapes, you know, with curves and straights. Once I'm done with the shape, I, I need to make sure I contain it completely, right? And then I can uncheck on border and then check on background and it will fill it in. And that's what I want all my shapes. But even though that matches my sketch perfectly, maybe it just doesn't look as clean as I want. Though I kind of like it, so I'm going to leave it. So what's another way I can make that? Well, I could leverage kind of the digital perfection of these shape tools. If I hold down shift and make a perfect circle, right? And then if I do another one, but this time I'm going to make that circle a different color just so I can see it clearly just for the time being. Whoops. And it's just like how I did the eyes, right? I'm going to make a thick circle outline. Just like that. And then how do I subtract the center from you know the white circle on top from the black circle behind well i just hold down shift and i select both of them and then i get the different merging options or subtract options and i want to subtract right and then i can resize it fit it around my eye but the problem is my sketch is not a complete circle, it's a broken circle. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my opacity down on it so I can see where that circle breaks. It's right there and right there. And then I'm going to use a triangle and then rotate it. It's white, so I don't, just because that's the last shape I created. And I'm gonna use it to cut off the circle at one point. If I hold down shift, it will do it perfectly vertically. So I'll show you how that works. By taking the opacity back up on my kind of donut, right? And now I just subtract, I select both of them, and I subtract one from the other, right? So now I have a break in it, but if I take the opacity down again, I see that the, the break needs to come further, so I can take another triangle, and maybe a, a right edge triangle this time. or I could use a rectangle or anything else, right? Decide, okay, I wanna break it right there, maybe right at the center of the eye, and it will show me guides that does that. And then I select both of them and I subtract. And then I can take it up to 100% opacity. I could have also just used a square since I used horizontal there and uh, vertical there. And then I can decide, do I like that look better? Or do I like that look better, right? Or I can even combine them one on top of the other. And I guess because I'm going for a logo, I like this look better, but I don't like that. I like it there, but I don't like it here. So what can I do? I can double click on it. Should be able to double click on it. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is what I don't love about the merge tool <laughs> is that they're kind of phantomly there so that you can undo them. But I would like to like solidify it so that I can actually play with the anchor points here.
and it doesn't really let me unless I, I pull them from the original file like that. So there are, there are things we're limited in in using this free browser-based program. So to truly have full control, I mean, I can cut away again, and that's probably what I'll do. I'll use, um, this time, I'll cut away using, nope, don't want to upload my own. I'll cut away using a 45 degree triangle. So I think that will soften it in a way I like more. But once you subtract from it, you can't really edit the anchor points the way you used to be able to otherwise. So I'm just going to angle it a little bit, and then I'm going to subtract one from the other. OK? And I think one of the reasons that it's difficult is that none of it feels intuitive. It's all uh, more based around computer language and what's needed for, for the easy computing of these elements. But now I can duplicate it. I can right click and duplicate on this complex shape I've made. And then I can rotate it and maybe use it on this side, or at least a start for this side. So it's really good for standardization. And then I might think, well, I like that, but I'm going to need to move these two. So I'm going to select both of them and then just use my arrow keys and move them a little bit. So now I'm deviating from my sketch and trying to make it a better, cleaner kind of logo. And I can leverage my, my tools to do that. Digital does some very nice things. Now I have another problem. I want to get down to my layers so I can turn off my background. And I'm not sure how to get, because I've built a lot of paths now. So let me see. There we go. It's just right there at the edge. I think it's because it's underneath an ad screen that I have blocked. So now I have this. And it's looking better and better, starting to come together. OK. So it's just more focus. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to just go crazy with the pen tool, because that gives me the most direct control, even more than using shapes. And I'm going to start here using the pen tool. I'm going to start with a curve. And then even though the curve wants to reverse, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go around, because the most important thing is to complete the shape, right? And I'm on the outside of this shape. Make it a curve. So this is a rough draft. Think of it as like cutting out with scissors roughly the first time. Even though it's now overlapping itself because I need to reverse the direction of that one curve. This is one of the hardest things to do with the pin tool. Are like arches because you're reversing the direction of the curve very quickly. And then I close the path. Because I've closed the path, I can double click on it and then I can fix that curve. But I only want to fix it on the one side. So I hold down Command. And then I can bring that curve to the outside. Then I can fix this curve. 
There we go. And even it out. Move that anchor point a little bit up. Move this one a little bit up to be in line with it. There we go. Making little tweaks. Okay, and then I can turn off the border, which is helpful for when tracing, and then fill it with a color. And I want the color not to be white, but to be black all the way on that side. And I can click off of it. And see what I've got. And then I don't think I want a hard edge on this. So if I double click it, I can just bring those corners in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, next. This is another one, the most difficult thing for the pin tool. It's changing directions of curves. The easiest way is not to try to do the whole curve in one, but to go to the center of the curve. And then use the straight and then go to the center of the curve. And then use the straight and then go to the center of the curve. And then use the straight. And now on the outside, go to the center of the curve above it. And this will keep you from having to reverse the order of them later. Ah! I have to redo all of that so I can contain the path. So you want to be careful not to click on an anchor point you've already set with your pin tool before you've closed the path. So in some ways it's easier just to just do it all with straights. Especially if it's in close quarters like this. Make sure you close it off. I think I'm safe doing the curves out here. It's all about precisely clicking, so don't click on any of those white points. You can always move it later. Until you've gotten back to where you started. There, now I have a contained path. <coughs> now to change it, I double click on it, and I can just double click on the arches to turn them into curves gives me handles to play with. I can play with them individually, holding down command on my Mac. I can even change their angle. And if you have an illustration and kind of a drawing background in traditional media like I do, it's really weird not to draw exactly what you want to draw the first time. Instead, kind of getting a rough plan and then refining it. But if you think like a computer, this makes perfect sense. You're making something more complex first, and then you're adding more data points. Because the priority for the computer in vector imaging is to save memory. So it helps everything look so clean. Okay, then I can change it from being a border to being a fill. And then I can decide, oh, okay, I want that curve to be a little bit different because it looks a little different as a fill. And I want this to be a little softened. 